It was then repurposed so that it could start burning oil. So it's one of our first products of our oil industry. We also have the Carnegie Free Library, 1916. We have the police headquarters. The foundation stone was laid in 1870. And again, even as a ruin, I told your mayor that um, even as a ruin, it is a spectacular piece, the old headquarters. And we really look for that, and, and it's, it's really a signal of San Fernando. Then we have San Fernando City Hall, 1931. How many people here are older than 1930, uh, were born uh, before 1931? Anybody? <laughs> okay. Um, so that's, that's one of the oldest buildings we have. Beautiful, beautiful building. We have St. Joseph of Clooney, 1934. Now, the St. Joseph, the um, sisters of, Saint Clu uh, of Clooney were actually here since 1882 in education in, in San Fernando. 1836 in, in Port of Spain. And this was their building, the la uh, uh, one of their many. They had a wooden building first, and it built, and now it's 18, um, 18, 1934. So you have a, a mound of history, and then you have all the stories. And we really urge you to start collecting these stories, because even some of the very small buildings that are just as significant as some of the very sort of majestic buildings and we really look forward to continuing collaboration with the San Fernando Heritage Trust. We, you probably know that um, the National Trust will, is, the, is the organization that will legally list, but it is the people, it is the community that pulls together the information and the passion and the interest so that we can actually get to that point. So. We are really looking forward to great things. We congratulate you and we bring all the greetings and all the support from the National Trust. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McDonald. Uh, please, oh no, don't stand. This, this mayor is not one for pomp and circumstance, but is one for action. Thank you. <laughs> Acting CEO of Ms. Yvette Russo, Ms. Arvel Belfort, uh, Ms. Margaret McDowell, Deputy CEO, Ms. Betty Ali, Councillors, Reverend Terence Honorary, Heads of the Department of the San Francisco Corporation, members of the Trust, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. So when Ms. McDowell spoke about the Clooney Center, I looked to my right. And let me just draw this to your attention. You see that door under the arc there? That door has the biggest lock I've ever seen in my life. And the, and the biggest set of hinges and latch you could think about. Because the, the reason it was so, and the door is thick like that, is to prevent young men from coming in there to get at the young ladies who were housed there. Little did they do. <laughs> uh, at a function that we had a couple of months ago, uh, let me recognize Mrs. Terrence. Uh, Mohammed in the audience, a uh, stalwart, who really uh, should have born, I think, before 1931. So you should acknowledge Mr. Uh, Mr. Mohammed in your audience here, long standing Trinidadian. Uh, spent 60 years in the arts, contributing to San Fernando over the years. So, at a function we had a couple of months ago, um, I don't know if we could hear this song by Last Train on San Fernando. We have that song here? Do we? Do we have last train with San Fernando here? Yeah? We missed that train. Missed that train? All right. So at a function some time ago, I said, the last train from San Fernando is really a mix-up. It was not about the last train to San Fernando. It was really about a woman by the name of Dorothy who was getting married the following day and had gone to a party. And she met this young man who was chatting her and talking to her. And she said to him, if you miss this train, you'll never get another one. In that audience, we had none other than Mr. Michael Anthony, who said, no, that is not so. And he gave several reasons why I would have brought some evidence here to substantiate my claim. Because he said, and if Michael Anthony says so, it's so. So Michael Anthony said that that did not, that did not happen. You got it there? You played us down. So the song was composed by Mighty Spitfire in 1940s and sung by the Mighty Dictator in the 1950s. 
and was made popular by Ion, Duke of Ion, who's a Calypsian in the 1960s, which really would have coincided with the timing of the end of the, 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 the stoppage of the, the train at that time. So, Mr. Dr. Anthony, Professor Anthony, I think you got that one wrong. I want to correct you on that. I have my facts right. So, the song really is about a young lady who was given us a guy some advice that if you miss this train, I'll get married in the morning, you'll have another chance. Uh, I had my first experience with a train in 1965 as a child, small fellow. My stepfather, who was a ticket examiner of the TGR, uh, took me to Port of Spain. We went to see the West Indies play Australia in the Oval. And we left San Fernando about 5 o'clock in the morning, the first train to Port of Spain. And what amazed me about that ride is that we stopped at every stop you could think about between San Fernando and Port of Spain. Some of the villages that we crossed, they had to move a barrier across and block traffic because we went across the main street. I think it happened in Coover and Shogonas and somewhere in Barataria. But it was a long ride. But going to see the West Indies play against Australia in 1965 remained with me for years because the, the first team captain was Garfield Sobers captain his first team. And that team was made up of Rohan, Kanai, Joe Solomon, uh, uh, um, Conrad Hunt, uh, Simonis and West Hall and Charlie Griffith and Lance Gibbs. That was when the West Indies was the West Indies. And we played against the Australian who was captained by Bobby Simpson, Bob Cowper, Norman O'Neill, Graham McKenzie, Bob Hawk. Those were the players I'll never forget that because we were victorious and we beat them but not what happened to the West Indies team today. So a different time. I, I want to come really congratulate the, the Heritage Trust for the work that they've been, do, do, been doing. And I've been outlined here this evening about this history that we need in San Fernando and the preservation of all the, the, the historical areas and the data that they've been gathering and the hard work they've been doing under very difficult times to make this thing happen. Uh, there's a lot of myth about the strain being here and, and its presence and number 11 and train number 27. But the fact is, this is the last train and this is an, uh, more or less a replica of what we had at that time. I may have my reservation about its placement and and its presence here in terms of where we are going with the development of the waterfront project and more importantly local government reform which is critical to our existence and our development when local government reform comes to san fernando we will have our own autonomy to do things as we want as opposed to depending on central government to guide us and advise us maybe at that time we'll be asking stakeholders where do we place this engine is this the ideal place for it or is it or will it be appropriate on the wharf next to the TGR building where the whole waterfront will be developed and where it will have more perspective and bring more value as opposed to where it is here. Or maybe we can move it out together, maybe put it in urban park where there's a playground where children can take pictures of it as opposed to it being hidden away behind these barriers and concrete where you have to see from the outside. All these things are considerations that we have to take as we move forward and progress. But I'll be the last man to move this train because I tried to move the clock. <laughs> And, and I'm still hearing about it. They say I carry the clock home. They say I carry the clock in the panyard. They say I hide in the clock in the city hall. I want to keep the clock over there. They won't stop. I pass in by with the shop, I'm ball, me with the clock. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even come out of my house. So I'll be last man. One person say, next thing you'll move over the train. But if it is that it requires you know, that kind of liberal thinking out of the box for us to advance as a city, then we have to think about it because look at where it is situated in the heart of the city. San Fernando and Troy Trinidad is the only place where taxis park on the main road and, and the stopping as they want, arbitrarily moving when they want. This cannot happen in a first world country. And this is what we are aspiring to be. So there would be serious consideration of which the Heritage Trust will have to play their part in guiding us and inviting us as the members of council who are here this evening, but we are the ones who have to deliberate. When, when we move those things, not I move, it's the whole council. But then blame the council, say the mayor. Right, so I want you all to think about it seriously. This is a, 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 something that we have, a, a replica, a moment in time for us, something that's very special because a lot of children, young people themselves, who were born after 1965, 1967, have not traveled a train unless they went abroad. And the kind of train they have abroad is not what we experienced here in Trinidad in the 60s. They have train faster than car right now, electric train, train without train controlled by, 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 by computers and that sort of thing. A man staying home and guiding the train. Now those fellows work very hard. And the train drivers sweat because they were loaded with, with heat and cold right behind the back as they move forward. 
So this is very special to us for our history, and I really think that we should really think about what we can do with it, what we can do for this engine, actually. We call that train as an engine, and how noisy it was. So we could think about where we will put it, where's the ideal and special place for it, where we will put it, and maybe as we move forward, and we get the autonomy that we really want, we may have the, the strength and the wherewithal and the resources to have it well put together, well decorated. Maybe it needs to be covered because it's, it's, it's steel. Um, as somebody mentioned earlier, earlier, we spent considerable sum of money restoring it to what it is today. What will happen in six months' time? I was looking at it a couple of days ago, and it started to rust already. It is not covered. It's not clear-coated for protection. It may need a roof. All those things we have to consider, and these things come at a high price. So, Local government reform is critical to our progress and our development. So those of you outside there, you have to advocate for it, as we have been advocating as politicians, but we need your support as well. And then we'll find an appropriate place. That wouldn't be I move with it, but will be you, the stakeholders, say, move the train and not the mayor. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, patron of the San Fernando Heritage Trust. And we are indeed encouraged by your remarks. We are encouraged by your cooperation, support, inspiration as we move forward. There's a lot, lot of stuff to be done. And sometimes when we sit together as a trust and the other parent or sister organizations, we get overexcited. Sometimes you have to restrain yourself because there's so many things you would like to do, like to see happen. And uh, it, it can't all happen. Sometimes you hope it and wish it would happen in your lifetime. So before time runs out on us, no, I didn't say anything about moving the clock. It just it, for time runs out, we have to do what we must do while it is still day. All right? So we will be working closely with the mayor to achieve all these objectives that we want to achieve in terms of the history and heritage of our beautiful city. We close here, but before we do, we want to ask just for a word of, th a word of thanks. It's not in the program, but it's, it's remiss of us. We must invite... Mrs. Celestine, uh, Michelle Celestine, our secretary of the San Fran Heritage Trust, um, to give the vote of thanks. Please, Michelle. Thank you for your applause. Good day, everyone. Uh, it's always a pleasure. San Fernando. Our heritage is true, well and truly being preserved. An idea just born a few years ago and now coming to fruition is something that we are truly, truly happy and elated about. Today I can only offer warm and immense gratitude to our patron, Your Worship, Mayor Alderman Junior Regrello, for his continued support. We would not be where we are without you. I can't also thank enough acting CEO, Mrs. Rousseau. I always enjoy hearing her speak. She has such vivid memories of not just a beautiful, growing up in a beautiful city, but a beautiful country. And her patriotism is something that inspires me and should inspire all of us to our chair of the National Trust, Mrs. McDowell. Thank you for coming, and thank you for giving us that assurance that you've received our correspondence and that we will shortly have the public declaration of the historic district of Harris Promenade and the waterfront, King's Wharf. Mrs. Belfort, a dear and valuable national treasure, Thank you for sharing the records, making them accessible, improving the archives, and you always make it quite clear that you weren't the first archivist to fight to preserve the historic records of Trinidad and Tobago. One of the things that we need to bear front and center is that when we preserve our history, it's not just for sentimental reasons, but really and truly, it is preserving our culture, our sense of identity, and who we are as a people. And that really is the crux and should be the driving force behind all of our initiatives. So for all of you who are passionate about this, who have this understanding, I thank you for having the good sense. And I know that amongst these people seated here, we have a wealth of superb, superb individuals. And what I want to say even more is that 
by preserving our history, we are also going to be diversifying our economy. Remember, there are opportunities, not just, as you saw, with restoring the engine. We had tradesmen, the history that I know local government have so much to offer, not just that leading the charge for being a part of this celebration. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. I know you speak on behalf of the rest of the team. There are several of the key leaders here who are leading committees, um, Dr. Rossiford, Verda, uh, Mohes, Maraj, and others, Maraj, Mohes, and, and the others. David is somewhere out there looking at heritage markers. We have identified over 100 sites in the city with a marker marker um, that we have located down to the back of the compound. We want to just go there and let so that when people pass, they could read a little bit to facilitate access to this um, facility so that young people like the scout who was just here, um, members of the scout and understanding with us. In September, we are signing with the Girl Guides and they're part of their heritage badges. Okay, we are also signing and establish a, a proposed replica village on San Fernando Hill and the mayor, of course, has agreed to um, some sort of monument in the city. So some things are happening and we're really excited about it. We have also started Heroes of Our Heritage, a video series looking into the life of people who have contributed historically to Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. James Lewa, the man who worked hard with others to save the hill. And of course, Mr. Torrance Mohammed. We will be talking to him next concerning his memoirs and his early days and through the years a hero of our heritage. So we want to move to repair to that section, the mayor to lead us, we want to invite you to join us. We just walk down there and do this before we get that shower of blessing, which is coming. So shall we now just move over there and we'll get a little video clip and come back. Sweet darling in matrimony And if you act right You can take me out tonight It is wine and dine And get back in time About the place you are taking me Cause if you slip I slide And I may never be a bride It is a bibi-dee-dee-bam-bam Oh, bam-bam, yeah 